Mr. Stephen Weigespank is the president and CEO of the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. Mr. Wags, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Happy Friday to y'all. Yes. Thank you, sir. I found an article a couple of days ago, and I read it, and I thought, well, this can't be new. This can't be current. It was at Forbes.com. And then I looked really, really, because, you know, sometimes you'll see articles and they'll have a, a date, but it'll be an update from an older story. But this evidently seems to be something that is just a few days old. And, and I, I'm sure you know a little bit about it and can enlighten us, give us more details. Here's from Forbes.com. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards has unveiled a proposal to create a new 3.5% tax on business gross receipts above a million and a half dollars. Businesses would either pay the new gross receipts tax or the state corporate income tax. What, what can you tell us about that? Will... Is he just trying to wear everybody down to get more money from business owners in Louisiana? I don't think that's the play at all. I don't think there's a, a real plan coming together whatsoever. I, I think at the end of the day, what he really wants is he would like a more personal income tax to come in because that's reliable funding streams for government. And instead of coming out and just saying that, um, you see a lot of flares and tennis balls thrown around the yard so everyone can chase things around as diversions. And I, I think that is that that proposal is nothing that's being discussed in Baton Rouge. And really? So no. I, I, so to say, look, maybe tomorrow that will become the new shiny object that everyone's pointing to. But as of right now, um, uh, it's really the calm before the storm when it comes to budgeting and taxes. So what's going to be – What's going to be, if this is just, as you said, a diversion, that just like they're floating trial balloons just to uh, get everybody to look away from what's really happening, what's really going to happen in the next special session? I, I think this is the rhythm to look for. Um, next week, there's going to be something called the Revenue Estimating Conference that's mm -hmm. going to meet. Um, that's the committee of economists that gets together and says how much money the state has collected and how much they have to spend. They're going to meet next week, and the House has been pushing for this meeting for weeks now. And the, and the administration has been saying, no, 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 let's hold off, because they know as soon as they meet, the REC is likely to recognize another $300-plus million in collections from the uh, receipts from the federal tax cut. And so government benefits from that. And so the administration has been pushing back on that REC meeting because they don't want more revenue to be found. They would like the hole to stay big so they can go out and raise additional Excuse dollars. Excuse me, pardon me just a second. So what you're saying is that John Bell and, and all his guys in Baton Rouge, they don't want to have this meeting because at that point it will be made known that his fiscal cliff, the budget shortfall that he says is close to a billion dollars, isn't really close to a billion dollars? Next week that meeting, if it happens, if the REC meeting takes place, it is highly likely they will recognize an additional $300 million benefit to the state because of the, the federal tax cuts. And you think Once, the governor would say, yay, that's great, but you're saying no? How crazy is that? He says, well, he, he says both things publicly. He says, yeah, that is good. Hey, that's great, but we've got to take our time. We've got to be cautious. We don't know if it's all going to come in. The economists who are there, when you bring them into a room, they say, look, yeah, we, we see it. We can recognize that. But, again, for REC to meet, it has to be a unanimous vote. And the administration has a vote on there. And so if they're not ready to say, yes, we're ready to pull the trigger on it, it's hard for the House to go forward on it. And the reason why they want to delay it is the House is ready to pass a budget. The House is ready to get a budget out of committee and on the House floor. But the administration, the theory is, doesn't want the House to get that $300 million. They'd rather have it recognized either later once it's in the Senate or after the session altogether once other revenues are taxed. That's kind of some of the, the gamesmanship going on in Baton Rouge right now. When the dust settles... What kind of deficit, if any, are we actually going to be facing, Wags? My theory is if you're, if you're talking in the 900s now that the administration is talking about, once they recognize this 300, and then also there's another $150 million that from last year's collections came in higher than expected. So if you start taking that collective 450 away, you're somewhere in the $500 million range. Now, I would tell you if you go back over the years – a $500 million deficit was something that you you know, you know, addressed, but it didn't cause the hand-wringing and, and end-of-the-world-as-we-know-it messaging that we're seeing right now. And so I think you'll see the House budget start moving that tries to address somewhere 
in the hole of $500 million. And they'll probably do it with a collection of cuts and, you know, uh, fund restrictions and things like that. And we'll see what their plan does. But, but what the House wants to see is how much money can we take out off the, off the top right now, and that's why they need REC to meet. But historically, John Bell is, in my mind, of a mind that the people in Louisiana are just keeping too much of their own money that they're not giving enough to Baton Rouge. Is, is there anything that could happen budgetarily when these numbers come in that would make John Bell go, you know, I don't need new taxes and new fees and new registrations and more money after all? As of right now, the answer to that is clearly no. The, the, the message that they are sending is, listen, the whole 994 and $1 short of that is not acceptable. And so, yeah, REC may find some money, but if you can't raise revenue to fill every remaining gap there, then that is unacceptable. That's the message as of right now. And I think where you're seeing that divide where there's a growing caucus in the legislature. And listen, it's not just the House. There are folks on the Senate side who are getting more and more concerned with this to say that, listen, we're willing to take a look at some revenue discussions, but you have got to come and work with us on some spending reductions. Every spending reduction that's proposed is demonized and, and, and declared unacceptable. Wags, this is a dumb question, but help me with this. I'm a simple-minded woman. Our population in our state is, is declining. This is, And it's not just a Louisiana problem. Every year, government keeps growing. If my budget... In my if if I take a pay cut at work or or I don't do a side, I have to cut my budget. What do we have to do sitting here listening to you to keep government from growing every year when the rest of us it's not how we operate? Well, Aaron, you don't sound very simple minded to me. Sounds like you got your finger around the pulse of the issue. I mean, I agree a hundred percent with you. I mean, in Louisiana over the years, and this is a generational problem. We feel like the only way we can do anything is to spend a whole bunch of money and send it to Baton Rouge, and that model is bankrupt. In Louisiana, we are the highest per capita spender at the state level in the South. We spend more per capita at the state level than any other state in the South. The bottom four states on that list, Texas, Georgia, Florida, and Tennessee. Hmm. The states in the South that are winning economically, school-wise, road-wise, every, every metric you want to look at, the states that are winning in the South are not spending through the nose to get there. They're creating an economy that works. They're creating local solutions, and they're letting people control their own destiny more to the extent than we've ever allowed. I mean, that's what the winning states do. And so we can continue to try to say, oh, no, let's just keep throwing money at the old school model here in Louisiana and hope it works. Or we can embrace a different model, and that means Baton Rouge has to start spending less, and they have to start trying to you know, micromanage less and let people get to work, keep more of the money they earned, and live their lives. 